The Black Country Arms was formerly the Green Dragon and is recorded as far back as 1627 when it was part of the municipal buildings. It became a part of the Magistrates Court in 1910 and has now returned to its former use as a pub. It's first mentioned on paper in 1627, the year that Walsall got its own town charter and officially became a town. The reason that it's unusual is that the Green Dragon in the past was always owned by Walsall Council. In fact, part of the Guild Hall, the Town Hall, it must be the only Town Hall in Britain with its own pub. It was used for mayoral dinners and as an overflow building for the Guild Hall and used as offices and courtrooms. The cellar underneath were occasionally used as cells for criminals. It closed as a pub in 1910 and became just a part of the Magistrates Court. During the 1980s it was renovated and it's now a pub again. Uh, There's a number of stories associated with the pub, including people feeling someone standing right behind them on the stairs and sightings of a ghostly hound in the building. However, the most frequently reported ghost haunting in the pub is a lady in a blue dress who stands in the second floor window. Uh, Because the floor was taken out to create a higher ceiling, it's no longer possible for somebody to be standing in that particular window. Could it be Mary Hemmings, Hemmings, the wife of Deacon Hemmings, who lived in the building during the 1700s? Despite losing three children, Mary appears to have been happy there. Perhaps this is why she appears to have never left. It's very strange being in the pub, in the centre of Walsall, being connected so closely to the political history of Walsall. There are many strange and unusual things that happened here. Anti-corn law rights were centred on the building. Uh, The dragon had a rivalry during the 18th century, the pub across the road, and they tried to outdo each other. Uh, One pub during the 18th century would have German waxworks on show. So the dragon got camels and they used to have a theatre in the pub. When there wasn't a theatre in a dedicated building in Walsall, it used, it used to be in that pub and they would hold big dinners there for public events. The Starting Gate pub in Walsall, an entity believed by locals to be a former landlady, has been known to clean and tidy up after messy customers have left. The Manor Arms at Rushall, a plethora of ghostly activity is reported at this historic site, which was formerly a farmhouse. While the bulk of the building is 18th century in construction, certain sections of the site do appear to date back to the 15th and 16th centuries. The, uh, the figure of a woman dressed in white and wearing a straw hat has allegedly been seen inside the pub. She is, according to local legend, a former landlady who found, fell downstairs at the pub and died. A tall, dark male figure has allegedly been seen by regulars in the bar, walking along the ground floor passage which bisects the building. Certain stories tell of ghosts of two children being associated with the building, though details as to who they might be and why they allegedly haunt this site are somewhat vague. Uh, Shellfield, Litchfield Road, the Leeswood branch line, ran through Shellfield in Walsall and close to trains in the mid-1960s. Uh, the deep cutting under the Litchfield Road has long since been filled in, leaving just the upper section of the west wall of the bridge remaining. Nevertheless, the unmistakable sound and smell of steam engine running beneath the bridge on a long-gone single-track railway, as it's been experienced on more than one occasion, bypasses by on the Litchfield Wall. In Coldmore Green, uh, a building was once the high... White Hart Inn is now converted into flats and a private residence. It was the site of a macabre discovery and mysterious manifestations when a mummified arm was discovered in the attic. 
it's alleged that imprints of a hand appeared of the female apparition. Uh, and a female apparition has been seen and heard. It was discovered after the landlord heard crying coming from the la- attic. At the White Hart Inn, a ghost dressed in Victorian clothing is thought that this girl was a maid who took her own life in the building. I presume this to be the old White Hart at Coldmore Green, but cannot be sure. At a tattooist's on Gord George Street, a worker in the shop reported loud bangs, as if someone was jumping up and down, animating from an empty room. The door of the room was also opened twice on its own accord. During the mid-1980s, residents from across the borough heard alarms going off and loud bangs coming from laundrettes in the dead of night. In fact, it was Detroit house music, after local entrepreneur Neil Rushton had discovered a local bylaw which allowed music to be played all night in Lord Dretz. Bentley Hall was a royalist stronghold during the English Civil War and was the seat of Colonel John Lane, the brother of heroine Jane Lane, who travelled with the fleeing Charles II to Bristol and ensured his safe passage out of a hostile parliamentarian ruled England. The hall is one of the places that King Charles II hid during his escape from the Battle of Worcester in 1651. It's said that a cavalier haunts the site. Today a cairn marks the spot where the hall once stood, and during the 1960s there were many reports of a friendly ghost, affectionately named Charlie by locals, seen at the cairn, wearing a long cloak and having the appearance of a cavalier. Several members of the choir at Emmanuel Church claim to have seen him, along with several bell ringers. He's reported to have been particularly active during December 1966. Reverend Raymond Wilcox claimed to have seen him, as did the Virgin, Mrs. Pallet. He seemingly only ever interacts with ladies, with a jovial, gentlemanly manner, doffing his hat, hoping, hopping with an impressive bow to send them into a swoon. A few weeks after the vicar tried to dispel the fo- stories, a former employee friend from the hall came forward with more stories about ghosts stalking its rooms. Bentley Cemetery is said to be haunted. Uh, to be haunted. A witness walked past the cemetery and spotted a man sitting on a bench. Uh, the figure looked in his 70s and wore glasses. Uh, the witness turned briefly took his eyes off the figure, during which time the man had vanished. The cemetery was locked up and no one else could be seen. Wood Street Cemetery, Willinol, was once considered a forgotten site, having fallen into disuse and neglect. Uh, but the burial ground was cleaned up when Morrison's Superstore opened nearby a few years ago. For decades there have been ghost stories associated with the cemetery and its surrounding uh, roads. In one incident, a man allegedly saw a girl and boy dancing around the tomb before disappearing inside it. In a separate incident, another saw a green glowing figure standing in front of the graves. A well-in-all Roughwood Chase Lane local nature reserve, stories of three phantoms are said to haunt this area. A mad nun, a suicide and a white woman. Although not much is not known although not much is known of the first two, the white woman is said to be Pauline Kelly, who vanished in the nineteenth century along with her daughter. A shape is supposed to appear, appear and say, If white lady, white lady, I'm the one who killed your baby, is spoken. Uh, Victoria House Limor was haunted by a male presence uh, that entered two ladies' beds at night, uh, placing icy hands over their bodies. A ghostly figure was also spotted in the building lift and would move furniture around the empty flats. (laughs) 
Samuel Mosley, a miner who one dark night was drinking at the Bull's Head pub in Blockswich, when his wife Margaret came to fetch him home. He refused and in a rage Margaret said that she hoped that the pub would fall on him and bury him. As she passed the wishing tree nearby she repeated her wish and the roof of the pub fell in with a great crash, uh, breaking up the bedroom furniture though no one was hurt. As soon as she saw the results of her wish she rushed home and fell down in a dead faint. Uh, the wishing tree was destroyed by Walsall Council in the early 1960s when a small car park was laid out in front of the new bull's head. The roots still exist and have been spotted in potholes outside the derelict pub. Apparently one stormy night a French girl turned up, turned up on the stagecoach with just a coat and a bolt of pink purple silk. Allegedly in the night she was attacked by one of the men who looked after the horses and then killed her and cut her right hand off. He disappeared with the horses and this bolt of silk. In the early 1900s the pub was turned into a French convent of nuns. The convent was closed in 1963 or 64 and a housing estate was built in its place. Uh, there was talk about a flying nun of Blockswich or a grey lady who hovers on top of the surface of this pool where she's supposed to have drowned herself. Uh, the spring cottage has strange noises and apparently and apparently being heard at this pub at night and some regulars believe it to be haunted. Uh, the block switched lion. In 1932 a lion got out of Pat Collins yard and visited a house in Church Street. Uh, the German lion tamer working for Pat Collins could not explain how the lion got out of its cage and climbed over the wall to sneak into the garden of one house narrowly missing meeting the lady of the house. The lion then got back into another house in Church Street where the lady of the house was making dinner for her husband. She saw the lion, promptly got out and the lion got the dinner. They eventually managed to chase the animal into the front room and kept it, kept it there barricading it with doors and sent for the lion tamer to come round and fetch it. The story got mixed up with another. The lion tamer was at the cinema when his animal went walkabout. In desperation, the cinema owners flashed a message across the screen asking him to come fetch your lion. But there's another twist. Pat Collins had been known for letting lions out for publicity in the old days. Uh, but that there was, th these were lions that didn't have teeth or claws. But this escapee had his teeth, but was a very old lion. The Wesleyan Chapel 1837 license was issued to Benjamin Welsh, whose two children died, <coughs> unable to agree with Reverend John Bailey about the form of burial services at All Saints. He obtained permission from the Home Office to bury them in a simple but impressive brick vault beneath the chapel's entrance. They were to rest there for many years. In 1937, the building was sold to Bert Britton, who converted it into a garage, after being mysteriously advised by an elderly local that he would never do business until Mr Welsh's entombed children were buried elsewhere. Mr Britton arranged for them to be exhumed. Long before dawn on a cold stormy January day in 1938 the vault was opened. The dust of the children's bodies were reverently collected, transferred to a modern coffin, <coughs> carried to the cemetery and laid to rest for the second time. At Wallington Heath, on the way towards Cannock, there's an old pool. In the Georgian period, in the early 1800s, there was a pub called the Old King's Arms. Not the one on the High Street that was built much later. The pub was a coaching inn from the early days of stagecoaches, going from Walsall to Stafford. The Swan in Brown Hills, where there, there are plenty of spooky goings on, after hours, 
their landlords were in the cellar. <coughs> they knew the pub was closed, but they could hear people walking in the bar area above them. The television had switched itself on, and the doors had opened, and been no one there. There is a reputedly a haunted house on Old Town Lane, Pelsall. A ghost was seen at Pelsall Hall Sanatorium in the late in the 1920s, and a phantom monk has been spotted on Pelsall Common. At Darleston St Lawrence's Church, the child from the statue has been seen leaving the mother figure and walking off. The piece of art has also reportedly glowed in the dark, whilst a white phantom monk has been observed in the churchyard. <laughs>